So the second presentation of today will be a presentation called Pattern-Based API for Mapping Applications to a Hierarchy of Multicore Devices. This presentation will be given by Jia Guo with his co-authors Radu and Gagan. So, uh, Jia, are you here? Are you around? Uh, yes, yes. Yes, excellent. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, think you, I think you can share your, your screen to show your slide. So a few words about Gia. Gia is a, is a PhD candidate from the Ohio State University Department of Computer Science. Gia is working on parallel frameworks for data mining and machine learning applications. And he also works on studying the impact of API design on middleware performances. So Gia, the microphone is yours. You, you can have your talk in between 15 to 20 minutes. OK, OK. So can everyone hear me clearly? Yes, perfect. Yep. OK. Yeah, thanks for your introduction, Mohan. And thanks, everyone, here for your interest. Um, it's an honor to present our work here as one of the best papers of 2020. Uh, I'm Jia from the Ohio State University. In this presentation, I'm going to introduce our pattern-based API for mapping applications to hierarchy of multi-core devices. So specifically, uh, we target certain types of applications which process and react to real-time data feed and distribute processing of tasks among edge and central devices. We try to provide a general set of APIs so that the applications can be easily mapped to different multi-core environment. And we find this topic particularly interesting because uh, first, although powerful edge devices equipped with GPUs or neural accelerators are common, most pervasive and inexpensive IoT devices do not come with such capabilities. Yet the multi-core processors are even more popular, demonstrating great potential to process considerable workload locally. And secondly, um, proper distribution of workload among the interconnected edge central devices with different configurations can greatly improve the performance of such applications. As the context of our work, we first gave some general ideas on the IoT environment we are targeting. And we also introduced our previous work on reduction object which inspired our optim optimizations in this research. To better understand the features of our design, we talk about three applications we support and experiment with during the research. And then generalizing the characteristics of these three applications, we define a set of APIs. Uh, then we want to talk about the load balancing and optim optimizations on top of these APIs. Finally, we study the performance of our uh, implementation. So in the past decade, Internet of Things has evolved quickly. Today, we can see prevalent edge devices in everyday life, like smartphones, smart routers, gateways, inexpensive single board computers, smart cameras, and so on. They are widely available. Most of these devices have multi-core processors, some even equipped with GPUs, but most for rendering, and a lot of them do not have general purpose interfaces. Often, heterogeneous edge and central devices form vertical hierarchical structure. From the most powerful cloud servers on the top to sensors with limited processing power on the bottom. The connection is also hetero uh, heterogeneous from high speed fiber on the top to wireless connection with limited bandwidth and power on the bottom. Nevertheless, the apps in this context are often latency sensitive, such as real time control or image processing. So therefore we want to process data locally as much as we can so that we can return the results quickly and not overwhelm the bandwidth while wasting the computing power on the edge. To improve the efficiency of local processing on edge devices, uh, we seek inspirations from our previous work on reduction object. So this reduction object paradigm is 
proposed to as a highly efficient uh, alternate for MapReduce program. It contains four functions, key generation, object accumulation, object merging, and post-processing. So for a given application, these four functions can be easily derived from Hadoop MapReduce. Uh, but the difference is these four functions uh, will work on a user-defined reduction object, which is an accumulator of values. So as we can see from this figure for a given input element, uh, a key is generated pointing to a, sp a specific reduction object. And then immediately this input element is accumulated onto this reduction object. So once all the inputs are processed, accumulators from different threads will be merged and processed. Uh, yielding the final result. So similar to standard MapReduce, this process can also be easily mapped to multi-core and multi-machine environment. However, by improving the access locality of intermediate results, reduction object uh, achieves great speed up over Hadoop MapReduce and also Spark. So in our design, we want to extend the reduction object paradigm to broader types of image processing applications. In this way, we want to improve the locality of these applications so that we can maximize CPU and memory efficiency on IoT and edge devices. Furthermore, in the hierarchy of central edge devices, we want to balance the load of distributed tasks. So before we get to the system design, let's walk through the applications we worked on in, the, in our research. First, let me introduce a few um, common concepts using in the applications. So in target detection applications, uh, to find a target in different parts of an image, a detection window will slide across the different, uh, slide across the entire image, um, by a fixed step. The detection algorithm will run in each of these windows. Furthermore, to detect the target of different scales in an image, the application will downsample this image by different levels. Such series of downsample images here form a pyramid shape. The detection will also be executed on each level of this pyramid. So the first application is tar target detection based on HAR features. HAR features can be visualized as a series of black, white rectangles. For a given detection window here, uh, we apply HAR features onto this image. By sub uh, subtracting the sum of pixels in the white area from the sum of pixels in the black area, um, we can extract the edge information from this image. Then a decision tree will accept those information and classify the detection window as target or non-target. The detection with uh, local binary patterns works similarly. So within a detection window, by comparing the sum of pixels in a specific area, like the green square here, with its surrounding eight square areas, a binary serial representing the comparison result is generated. This result will also be fed to a classification tree for target detection. So the third application is based on hist histogram of gradients. The basic idea of HOG is that it calculates the norm and orientation of the gradients on each pixel then, gradients are uh, then the gradients are collected in a histogram through orientation binning. And the votes are weighted by the norm. The histogram of, uh, of different areas are then normalized with its vicinity and coded as vectors. So inputting all the vectors from a sliding window to a support vector machine, uh, the window can be classified as target or non-target. 
So to capture the above applications, we extend the reduction object interfaces with three functions specific to image processing. Given an image and the downscaling factor, the pyramid function here will generate a pyramid of downscaled images. And in each image, we can use the window abstraction to define a series of sliding windows. Within a window, an algorithm can be defined using the reduction object paradigm. This algorithm can automatically be mapped to all available cores. We also provide a abstraction for 2D convolutions, such as the one we defined in the hard feature ex extraction. So additionally, user-defined transformations are provided for better compatibility. When we use the pyramid operator, um, the same cal calculation is carried out on different scales of one image. Therefore, the complexity of one level is proportional to the size of the image, making it possible for us to estimate the workload. Through a one-time load test, we can estimate the processing power of each central and edge device. Then the pyramid workload can be evenly di distributed across the hierarchy of devices. In this way, we can minimize the global latency of these applications. For sliding window applications, we define a cache to store results across adjacent windows. In most cases, the adjacent windows share a large portion of common data. So it is very likely for the succeeding window to reuse the results from its preceding ones. Once a dependency is defined for adjacent windows, the system can sort out a proper execution order for all the windows so that the redundant calculation can be minimized. So, for example, here, the same hard feature is applied for adjacent windows. And the step between these two windows is just one pixel. As we can see, uh, ob obviously the results in the red circle can be cached and reused um, among, uh, uh, across the windows. There are three levels of parallelism in our implementation. The pyramid operation, as we have discussed, is distributed across different devices. And on each device, we map reduction object paradigm and window operations to different cores using OpenMP. Finally, on the lowest, lowest level, we further optimize the code with regular access patterns using CMD instructions. For example, the calculation of vertical and horizontal gradients in the HOG feature selection algorithm can be easily synthesized. And finally, we want to talk about our experimental results. In the first, the first experiment, we carried out performance and scalability comparison between our implementation and OpenCVs. Both versions of all three applications are tested on a Raspberry Pi and a cloud server. The second experiment tests the load balancing capabilities of our implementation. We set up a powerful desktop running as the backend of six uh, Pi's. We manually vary the load on different levels of devices and measure the latency. So we can see if our system works under the lowest latency in this manner. First, on a single core of uh, Pi, we implement, uh, our implementation is uh, like 17 to 35% faster than the implementation of OpenCV. When the number of cores grow, our implementation shows compatible scalability to OpenCV's implementation. When it comes to a server processor, our implementation is 27 to 39% faster. And from one to 16 cores for hard and LBP based detection, our implementation demonstrates a speed up of nine times and seven times, which is comparable with OpenCV. But for HOG detection, our implementation shows better scalability. 
this advantage mainly comes from the good, good scalability and locality of reduction object paradigm. So in the low balancing test, our system estimates that the desktop is 15 times the processing power of a single Pi. And we have six Pi's. So the system puts 2.5 units of workload on PC and one unit on Pi's. And the dash green line here is the, in the figure, shows the estimated Swiss spot of workload distribution. And the curves in the figures show how the actual latency changes as we vary the workload distribution. As we can see, under the system's recommendation, both cases working, uh, are working roughly under the optimized latency. So to summarize, our implementation shows better scalability and lower processing latency on both cloud and RPI, uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, moreover, we come up with a reasonable division of workload across hierarchy of devices. So that is pretty much all about our work. Thank you for your time again. Thank you, Jia. Um, so if you have, if audience has any question, please send them to me through the chat. I did not receive any question up to now. So Jia, I have two, two questions just to begin. In your slide 17, when you compare the three applications, it seems that LBP cascade is a little less um, better in terms of performance improvement compared to OpenCV. Can you explain why? Did you have an intuition for that? Uh, you're saying that the LBP cascade eh? mm -hmm. is it, a little, uh, performs a little better. Yeah, the performance improvement is a little less compared to the others. Oh. So do you, do, can you explain? Do you, yeah, do they, you, I guess do you feel the, well? I guess, um, I mean, from my viewpoint, it could be that the um, code, code that can be parallelized and optimized uh, by our reduction object, the portion of this code is less in the LPP cascade uh, algorithm. So yeah, that is my answer. Okay, okay. Uh, and I have the same question like the pre previous talk. Since you, you submitted your paper in CCGrid 2023, did mm -hmm. you advance on such topic? Did you continue to work on it? Uh, well, we... Uh, we do explore more like possibilities uh, on like um, optimizing the execution of like Spartan or uh, the IoT environment. But uh, for these um, for these applications, I think their uh, methodologies are quite well established, and and right now like some of them are um, like. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of feature selection algorithms here, and they are some of them. They are trying to incorporate them with, uh, like, um, like modern uh, deep learning uh, approaches. So we move on to deep learning rather than this. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Jia. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't receive any more questions through the chat. So I think we will go to the official moment. Um, Carlos, can you virtually join us through your camera? I will share my screen. Okay. So Gia, I hope you see my slide. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this is the official moment. So you officially received the best paper award for the third prize for the CC Grid 2020 conference. And we congratulate you and your authors for this prize. Thank you. <laughs> I think everybody applauds, but it's, everything is virtual. And like for the previous um, prize, you will receive some uh, some money award, so 500 money money prize that you have to share that you have to share with your co-authors. So you yeah, have to yeah, decide, <laughs> you have to decide that. And uh, yes, uh, congratulations for this mm -hmm. excellent uh, paper and excellent uh, presentation. Also very very nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I will just take a snapshot, so it's kind of photo a group photo. Like, Okay, so thank you very much, Dia. We, we close this best paper session for today. Raj, if you want to say a few words, this is uh, all done for us for this best paper session. Thank you.